Winnebago 29 DDBH coming in at 7,530 pounds here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And it seems like throughout the history of the RV business, anytime a manufacturer tries to put uh, like an island and kitchen slide in the middle of a double-double bunkhouse with an outside kitchen, you're always left with a really crappy entertainment center that requires you to do a 90 degree head crank to the left from the super slide seating. At least, that is, until now. <laughs> now usually when you have opposing slides and an island like this, it'll pinch everything off and you can't really get to much, it's not very travel friendly, but you notice somebody had their thinking caps on here because we can get to the dinette. And they specifically built this thing so you can get to the refrigerator unimpeded in transit. Now there's plenty of other storage, there's plenty of other things you can't get to, but two uh, really kind of important critical areas for travel accessibility and functionality are there, are available. So what's nice is if you're parked in a place where you can't open the slides but you want to pack up the fridge before you go, you don't necessarily have to open the whole darn thing up. But if you do nothing other than just open the kitchen slide, you can really get to anything you would need to pack the RV for uh, you know your, your next trip that you're going out on or unpack the RV from the last trip you were on as it were. But this right here, this is what hooks so many people on a layout like this. They, you know, when you add that kitchen slide, even with the island in the middle, what you're left with is just this huge sense of open negative space. This RV feels enormous inside. Even though, in truth, it's really not much bigger in terms of living area. It just It's big and open, and it feels awesome that way. But again, the problem is, historically, if you were sitting in the slide of a uh, you know island kitchen bunk model like this, that's where your entertainment center would have been located. And you'd had to do a 90-degree neck crank to the left to try to get to see that. Well, instead, when everybody goes, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. We're smart. <laughs> you know, we have... We have calculators, we can figure this out. So they realized that if they move the entertainment center over here, they basically all they did is flip-flop storage and entertainment, and suddenly the only glitch with this floor plan was corrected. Now we have an easy direct facing entertainment center that looks straight at the super slide, and that TV can actually even swing out for easier viewing from the dinette. So suddenly we go from kind of a glitchy gimmick floor plan to a legit straight contender. This is strong. Now we've got that open feeling vaulted ceiling making it look nice and big in here. The lighter, brighter two-tone interior decor gives you the contrast to make it look even larger. Plus, with the opposing slides, the amount of floor space that you see, this thing feels absolutely enormous inside. Now over here, we've got that free floating dining table with that elliptical base. So if you want to fold that down and use it like a coffee table in front of the sofa, you can. And remember guys, this one could be different from the one that we have in stock. The one that we have in stock might have a theater seat, it might have that height of bed, it might have a different decor, it might be different outside. You get the idea. Um, you've got pleated nightshades for privacy on all those windows, but you do notice that all those windows open for some sweet mega airflow in there. Um, you'll also see that on both sides, of the slide out. Like you can see some hiding uh, uh, right behind the sofa here. You'll have some in the opposite corner by the dinette as well. You have household and USB plugs. So especially in a bunk model like this where we have uh, half a bajillion people camping around in here, it's really nice to be able to have everyone's phone topped off and charged up and whatnot. Now whether it's that tabletop or it is the uh, kitchen countertop. Everything is something other than a, a conventional T-mold. In the kitchen, we're going to get solid surface counters. In the bathroom, on that table, you're going to get a, a pressed membrane countertop. Now, we've got a bunkhouse here with tons of sleeping, but what's nice is the super slide gives us room for even more. Because you can just fold out all the seating here, and this is really nice if the kids bring friends, or if you bring extended family, or maybe you just have a really big family, you know, and you need to sleep a bunch of people, and you got to utilize every ounce of space. Now, you can sleep two people on that high to bed there very easily, but do remember that, um, you know, this, there might be a theater seat in the one that we have in stock. Definitely give our guys a call or review our website to see exactly what we have and how it's equipped, because things like that can vary. Although we do try to keep the pictures on our website always up to date, and our, and our guys are happy to double check and walk out and physically verify for you. Now what I would like is if folks, if you would leave uh, some comments in the video description, 
you know, what kind of seating would you prefer? Would you prefer the theater seat right there? Would you prefer the high to bed? And, you know, kind of understanding why I think would help quite a bit. Now, note something right here you don't see very often. You know, in the main bunks, you've got a bunk ladder included with this. How nice is that? That's something that previously I had only ever really seen Rockwood doing on a consistent basis. So, uh, you know, seeing that extra attention to detail there from Winnebago, that's, I, I think that was an awesome thing that they did right there so that you don't have to, you know, heave the kids into that upper bed. Now, remember that table's free-floating. So, like I said, if you want to kind of kick it over, make it like a coffee table, you can. You know another thing that's cool? Whether it's in coffee table mode or in hide-to-bed mode, did you notice how the sofa never really blocks the RV off? That is one of the nice things about the island floor plan, is that you have another way around the island. You also have awesome storage built right into the island. And that is one thing this floor plan does do well. It has a lot of storage. It also has easy reach power outlets. And that's something that a lot of kitchens and RVs, especially laminated RVs, don't do well. This has a very well executed kitchen. Great wastebasket space in there. Kitchen has solid surface countertops. It has a recessed stainless sink that is metallic uh, faucet hardware right there. You know, they've done a very nice job over here. Also, uh, in the main slide section of the uh, kitchen area, you can see that you've got more of those easy reach appliance outlets. Now, they extended the kitchen slide here. This is longer than many kitchen slides. You can see how it actually goes all the way over here. So, you know, it starts with the eight cubic foot fridge and then we, uh, you know, move on to the stove. But notice how much room is between the stove and the microwave. When they extended that, they created a big chunk of extra countertop space with a whole lot of drawer space below. Blam! There it is. Just explodes right out at you. Even a full drawer below the oven. You know, they put a lot of plywood in this slide. You know, there you could find a lighter weight version of this camper. Are you willing to give up a lot of those nice plywood drawers that you looked at there? You know, little things like that make a difference. Materials matter, ladies and gentlemen. So here's a look at that TV in the pivot out position. And there is some storage space behind that as well, as well as a big pocket above. Um, now, the uh, TV, obviously, easy viewing below that. We have a Jensen uh, DVD uh, Bluetooth system, and you can get the J-Control app on your phone to be able to operate that from your Android or iPhone if you're so inclined, and that is free, thankfully. I love anything that has the price of free associated with it. It's hard to beat. You know, I've just, I've just really found that in my life. I don't know why. Electric space heating fireplace, also very nice. Um, I, mm, I think that's standard, actually, in this floor plan. This, this floor plan has a couple little oddball features about it you don't tend to find in the rest of the Mini Plus lineup. But it also has a lot of consistencies with the rest of the Mini Plus lineup, such as having fully framed out doors. Now, in this case, the bathroom door is really the only one, but you notice it's fully framed so that this door, it, like the jacks aren't down. This thing's probably not perfectly square, but it still opens without a hitch because stuff maintains its shape. And this is a well done bathroom. Um, they've been taking notes. I, I think that there's an above average chance that the guy who designs the Mini Pluses down at Winnebago has been cyber stalking a lot of my videos because it, I swear, either that or it could just be he's really sweet at what he does, which is also very possible. But if you take note, it's like anytime I walk through a, a, a nicer upper end camper, something that might compete with a Winnebago product, it's like, very shortly after, I seem to find those features incorporated into the Winnebago RVs, like the dedicated linen space in the bathroom, the vaulted ceiling plus the skylight and that radius shower for tons of elbow room. Those are great, great features right there. Also, a porcelain stool and no heat vents in the bathroom floor. Have you noticed that? There is a cabinet heat duct to uh, get there another way. Now, over here, again, more of a material premium RV. These Winnebagos, maybe not always the, the hottest sizzle, but certainly one of the best built things you could ever purchase in this category. Like the better countertops in here, just like we saw on that tabletop, the nicer stainless sink that we see in here, you know, that's like, that's kind of a trickle down factor from the Winnebago motorhome mentality. You know, obviously when you think of, a lot of times when people think of motorhome, customers will actually come in and they say, where are your Winnebagos? And they actually just mean motorhome. The word Winnebago is legendary in this business. It's synonymous with just the word RV. And they are not simply living off their laurels. That is a fat jack. 
Um, 15K air is standard in the Mini Pluses, by the way. So that central air conditioning system we're looking at, uh, that will be your bigger air unit, uh, you know, without having to upgrade it. And that's what's nice. Now, over here, where the Entertainment Center usually is, in most of the brands that have that 90 degree neck wrecker entertainment, you notice that you've got all sorts of shelf, a big deep pantry space, all kinds of great storage below. But right when you walk in the door, you have this interesting little corner pantry and it's got some new electronics. Now, frequent viewers of our Halid RV videos are going to recognize the in-command system. Um, very popular in the Keystone Cougar travel trailer series and it's effectively the exact same thing. What's neat about this, guys, Anything you can do on this, you can do on your phone via the in-command app. So I can get on my phone. I can turn on, off the water heater, different modes, run my slides, lights, all kinds of stuff right from here. But you don't necessarily have to do it from the panel or your phone. In the bedroom and that switch over there, those are main cabin light switches so that you don't have to go through and like individually click off lights or anything like that. Now, um, in... This is the first time I've ever seen the in-command brain on the inside of an RV. Not that I think that's better, worse, otherwise different, just an observation. So you take a look at this, and you're like, what am I looking at? Long story short, you can all the wiring comes into one central location. Also, if you don't feel like waiting for that panel to boot up, like I didn't want to wait to turn on the awning, I just simply turn this uh, switch to motor one, which co apparently corresponded to the awning. I don't know that, I just discovered that through process of elimination. And I still have a manual button I can push to run slides, awnings, uh, stabilizers, I believe, might be able to function off that. So a bunch of cool different things you can do with it. And we do have a sliding pocket privacy door here for the bedroom. 60 by 80, residential queen bed so that bigger folks like me can stretch out and be comfortable. Dual side stands, you've got, you know, more household, more USB lights, more of everything. Dual hanging closets, huge, deep overhead storage. I mean, really, in a way... The overhead storage, I would almost argue, is too big, although I don't believe any storage can ever really be too big, because it makes the rest of the bedroom almost feel a little bit small. But that's not all you have here. You also have an entire additional closet space over here with some dresser drawers below. Now, you've got a handy little sort of like shoe garage right here, and technically, right now, you're in bed with me. I just want to point that out. We're in bed together, ladies and gentlemen, like, like crime bosses. So you've got great drawer space in here and just all sorts of... Whoop, it, well, we're not parked level, so the doors aren't going to do what I want. Now, this is on the back side of that small shelf space, so uh, I really don't know what you would do with this because it is kind of a small, shallow area, but the fact is, hey, it's there, whatever. And you can see here that, uh, yeah, I mean, you've got excellent, huge closet storage space. So one of the things that's very popular in the Rockwood Ultralight series is an extra closet slide out for extra hanging storage. Well, they've basically done that here, but without the extra weight and cost of the extra bed slide. Instead, you're getting it in the living room, which is kind of cool. Now, if you have enjoyed being able to see inside of this RV, compliments of the lights in here, that's compliments of Mr. Scott McKinney, or Big Scott here at Halet RV. I have a series of battery boxes I use, but after 20 new RVs arrived today, and I was burning up the camera, uh, you know, recording stuff like this all day, my boxes went dry, and he was kind enough to lend me his. So, thank you, Big Scott. If you folks appreciate that, you like this trailer, maybe call, ask for him, because he's part of the equation here. That being said, back to the RV... Remember, there are multiple different exterior decor options. This is the Platinum, which appears to be our most popular. It seems to really... that The, the Winnebago's also have like reds and blues, but the whites, champagne, and platinum seem to have kind of taken back over. Those neutral colors always sneak back in here. Now, one of the hiccups people, people have a heart attack, like, oh, there's a kitchen slide and the awning goes right over it. How much of that do I have left? Hang tight with me as we go around the camper. I will open the awning so you get to see that. Now, we have an anti-slam entry door there with an auto screen close band. So if you just kind of tap the screen button, it'll keep that door shut for you. Very handy. And a, uh, you know, more sturdy aluminum plank steps. And these things are great if your shoes are wet. They don't tend to slip slide around. Now, much like a fifth wheel, like these big Montana, you know, or pinnacle fifth wheels that you see here at Halet RV, these Mini Pluses have a drop frame st front storage compartment. Now you see similar things done in the Rockwood Ultralight series, as well as select Rockwood Mini Light floor plans, the bigger 25 foot ones. That is a monstrous amount of storage space. You'll also see that all of our doors have magnet holdbacks and nicer slam latches. So you can just drop it and forget it, good to go. 
Directly below that, we have a gas grill quick connect, and you see that home plate shaped sticker on the front of the uh, chassis right there. This has a different kind of chassis. It's not an I-beam frame. Long story, it, it's shaped like a Z, but it's made with a higher grade of steel that is lighter in weight, but stronger. Certainly not less expensive, but remember, this is a material premium trailer. But all those little things, like the use of plywood as opposed to beaver puke, the uh, the higher grade fiberglass on this, the better chassis, the uh, the all aluminum structure, things like that, maybe that's why out of every brand that we carry, Winnebago has the lowest percentage of warranty rate here at Halo RV. I think that's a pretty big deal, personally. Now, up front here. Power tongue jack to go along with that power awning. Make life simple and easy. Breaking camp is simple. Also, power stabilizer jacks. But what's a neat thing here, you have separate buttons for the left and right jacks. Now, I don't think that makes them function any better. And you don't use these jacks level. These are stabilizers, not levelers. But I just kind of like the idea that I control what the jacks are doing instead of just hoping it's going to do what it's supposed to do. I don't know. Just a little peace of mind thing for me. And again, like a fifth wheel, we have a uh, private front passer docking station which is kind of cool and as well as a simple side mount solar prep plug right here and you've got more than enough room up front there to uh you know keep your solar panels now as we're walking down the side of this beautiful t60 gel coat exterior <laughs> look at the shine on it it's ridiculous um i want to talk about the underbelly I don't want to talk about it because mostly you can't see it anyway. You can just see a skin. It's got a corrugated underbelly enclosure. That's standard. That's normal. The Mini Pluses have always had a heated enclosed underbelly. But uh, you now have the ability to add what they call extreme weather package. Even though it, it doesn't, you know, I, I can't tell you it's going to guarantee you like a zero degree functionality. They've never tested it. So I won't make a promise that I can't back up with data. But what it does... It adds uh, layers of uh, heat reflective material in the roof, the nose, and double layer in the belly, so that, uh, in the rear wall, I'm sorry, a layer in the rear wall also, so that as the sun is beating down on this thing, you're reflecting heat instead of absorbing it, or if you are going to go spring and fall camping, it'll help keep the furnace in the camper, which is kind of nice. Now, those windows you saw were all tinted. They all open for airflow, which is fantastic. You can keep the neighbors out, keep the sun out. By the way, if you pull those pleated shades inside, that is like literally double the effectiveness of these dual pane windows that everyone likes to call thermal pane windows. RV thermal pane windows are one of the biggest rackets in this business. I, I Obviously, I'm very jaded on the topic, but if you just feel like parting ways with $1,200 to $2,000, I've got other things that we could spend on it that you'll get a lot more benefit from. Whenever there's a slide under an awning like that, it's like we're playing a game of Family Feud. It's like, you know, 100 people surveyed, top answer on the board is, um, how much room is left under my awning with that slide out? So, rather than just try to describe it to you, I thought, hey, let's just push the button. Let's open it up, let's show you. And the short answer is, plenty. There's plenty enough room still under that. It's not a super big, deep slide. Now, what's also kind of cool about that is it's organically casting shade on your kitchen slide. So you have a lot of cabinetry space there, which can hold a lot of heat. A lot of people don't think about that. Like if it's really hot when you get to your destination, open the windows, turn on the fans, and open the cabinets so that you can exhaust all the heat because those cabinets turn into little ovens. Little tip from your Uncle Josh. And I got that tip from viewers like you. Actually, that's one of the things I love about you folks is that we fostered a very nice positive environment. I love it when you share feedback like that. So the outside kitchenette door here is this big, long door, double magnet holdbacks, double uh, compression latches on that. Now, just like we saw inside, our countertop material here is uh, that pressed membrane stuff. But what's really nice is you have a real sink with a real drain that goes into a holding tank. It doesn't just kind of dribble onto the ground and it's not the dog dish. And you notice that you've got a nice little power outlet in there. So if you do want to have a little maybe toaster going, have a little, you know, pancakes and, uh, you know, toast, bacon sort of breakfast, pl one, please invite me. But two, you're good to go. Now you do have outside TV hookups next to this kitchenette as well. There is LED lighting at the base of the awning and the awning does have easy tilt arms here so you just two finger tilt it and then when you're done same thing it just pops right back up but let's say i forgot to do that let's say i forgot to kick the awning back up no worries no worries whatsoever because 
uh, this is a self-correcting awning. So, uh, you know, hypothetically, again, if I did forget to do that, it will fold itself up correctly just as you're pushing the button. So it's kind of what my wife would call husband-proof. I don't know what that says about us, but I know that I am lucky to have her. She tells me so. <laughs> I hope, I really hope everyone understands that that is all in just jest, that I've got a very good, awesome wife. She's the best partner I could ever imagine having in life, because one, she tolerates me, and two, she's funny. Um, so, we've got everything at ground level. Let's hop upstairs. And the biggest thing I really want to show you, unfortunately, is something you can't see. It's something you can only experience if you see one of these in person. If you get a chance, if the place will let you, we will let you at Halo RV, walk around on the roof of one of these. And it is so sturdy, so stable. I'm pushing about 200 pounds right now because, especially, especially with what I ate for lunch, I'm definitely over 200 pounds right now. I gotta quit that, but you know, food, man, man delicious. What are you gonna do? Um, what I'm getting at though is RVs like this, they have that vaulted interior, vaulted exterior ceiling. They feel so much more load bearing because the vault is so much more dramatic. And if you're camping in a place, well, frankly, anytime, it's, I feel like it's stronger structurally, so it's helping hold the trailer together, together better. But especially if you're going to camp in a place or have the RV stored in a place where you can't have it inside and away from the weather, like in the Midwest, in Canada, uh, you know, in the northern states where you get just crazy snow out in the mountains, let the snow pack up on this thing. It'll be fine. Now we've got an all aluminum skeleton uh, and uh, I'm walking on 3 8 decking here. So, I mean, roof trusses, the wall, the floors, everything on this is all aluminum skeleton. The idea here being first class and built to last. And the fact that Winnebago has not yet adopted that as their corporate slogan, I think is a shame because they most certainly, most certainly fit that description. Hi Jody, you have a good night, sir. Mr. Jody, there's one of the fellows that does surface inspections for us, for those who haven't seen him. Before we accept any of these RVs here at Halet RV off a new RV delivery truck, he checks stuff out to make sure that everything looks kosher on the surface, that, you know, we're not seeing daylight through slide outs or anything like that. And then we pull everything into the shop for a full burn, and then we do a full burn on everything again before you take it home. And we do all that at no additional cost. We don't charge extra dealer fees at Halet RV. We don't charge you to get it shipped here. We don't charge you to get it quality inspected three times. Uh, we don't charge you extra data cleaned or show you how it works. Propane fill, battery, uh, electric water surge protectors, basic hoses and stuff. That's all part of the tag at Halet RV. So there's no ugly surprises when you get here. We're just simple and easy to work with. My wife says I'm simple all the time. Once again, not wife bashing, just a joke. She's awesome. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Happy camping everyone, and with Jody leaving, it looks like, once again, I'm the last guy standing here at Halet RV today. Have a good night.